Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Beardman Studios, and I'm back yet again uh, for two reasons. One is because I noticed that some of the videos were blurry, even though I can see it fine in the in the example, like the preview. It looks kind of blurry on YouTube because it only allows like 480 or something like that. So I have this magnifier up here at the top of the screen so that you can see the words that I roll over. Uh, otherwise, they're kind of blurry. But anyways, let's uh, carry on. So in this video, as the title says, we're going to learn how to make a light flicker. And you can normally do this with animation, but that's no fun. We want to do it with uh, objects because it's more fun to, or with code, because it's more fun to have things dynamic and unpredictable. So let's create a cube, and let's bring it over. Let's create another cube, and let's bring that guy over. I'm just moving stuff around just so... Um, sorry if this top part's distracting, but it's almost necessary um, for people to be able to see. So there we go. I've created these four cubes just floating out. <coughs> excuse me, in uh, random space. So I'm gonna create a game object, and uh, actually I'm going to focus on these guys and create a game object in the middle of them and call them cubes and stick them inside. This is not necessary, but it's for my own sanity to put them at zero, zero, zero. Now then, I can focus on that and I can go to game object, create other. Let's do a, a point light. There we go. A nice little point light in there. You can see it affecting the objects here. So what we're going to do is add a component to this point light. So instead of our scripts folder, let's create a script a C sharp script called Flickr. And no, that's not the image service, that is flickering light. So let's attach that flicker to the light as a component. Now let's look at the light. There's a few things on it. There's range, that's important, and intensity. That's also important for making things flicker. So let's open up our script inside of mono and let me switch my YouTube views over to uh the mono view here. All right, there we go. Now we're back in code. And what we want to do is add a couple of public variables. So let's do a public float. Uh, let's do a vector2. Vector2, and let's call it uh, range length. And let's start off with, I think it was at 10, wasn't it? Uh, let me check. Yes, the standard range is 10. So it starts off at 10, let's end it at 20. And uh, oh, I'm doing this all wrong, equals new vector two, silly me. All right, and now, uh, so that's gonna be our range length. And our next thing is going to be a public float um, interval, which we're gonna have at 0.1f. And this is how, many, how long it takes before it uh, flickers. So, uh, I don't think we need a start, so let's just delete that out. And um, actually, let's make it more dynamic. Let's say we have an artist um, who is doing something, and he wants to set something, or she wants to set something, inside of the inspector and have the script not mess with it uh, the way they're used to it. So this range length um, will become a float. and it will be a percentage of how large it gets compared to original size and how small it gets compared to the original size. Let's say uh, 20%. So the, uh, the, I should probably actually put here um, scale percent. So the scale percent will be equals to 20. And let's have a yet another um, variable, but it's going to be private float start range is equal to zero. And inside of the start, let's make start range equal to um, game object dot light dot range. Easy enough. So now we have our start range and we can use the scale percent for the start range. Um, the next thing we're going to need is a private float start, or let's call it last time is equal to zero. So in our update, if last time plus interval is less than or equal to time.time, .time, 
So if the last time it did something plus the interval is less than the time, that means that amount of time has passed, we're going to randomly set the range and the intensity. Um, so we should also have a, uh, a couple variables for um, intensity. So let's do public, float, uh, scale, intensity. I don't even know if I'm spelling it right. Let's make the intensity somewhere between... Uh, let's make it scale about, let's see if it's one, let's scale it by 50%, so about half, because uh, any larger than that would be ridiculously bright. Of course, you can go back and change these to be static if you want. I'm just thinking about artists, um, because, you know, working at uh, with my studio, the Bearded Man Studios, look at that, I just advertised my studio in the middle of my video yet again. Um, we, we have a lot of artists, and they like things easy, as we all do. So anyways, I digress. Let's continue, shall we? Digress, continue. Uh, that sounds somewhat as a, like an oxymoron. So let's create a, uh, our, um, our start intensity, like we have a start range. So let's just copy and paste that and change it from start range to start intensity. And down here, let's just add it in the same exact way. Equals game object dot light dot intensity. There we go. And now in here, we can do our variables. So let's say the um, we first of all have to now set the last time equal to time dot time, of course, uh, so that doesn't repeat every update. And now we want to set our, um, our scale. So let's do uh, game object dot light dot uh, range is equal to random dot range and we're going to do it between um, let's see to get we gotta have to uh, let's uh, actually make it easier on the artist because they won't know what the percentages will be nor will I so let's just say scale amount it sounds better for me makes it easier for everyone to understand and the scale amount will be uh, 20? Sure. Let's make it 10, actually. Uh, let's make it 9, just so it doesn't go under or whatever. Anyways, and the... Um, I made scale amount twice, didn't I? Uh, we'll add this um, scale intensity amount. Easy enough. So, sorry for all this. So we can now do a random range between 0 Actually, since we're doing that, let's make this 10. Sorry for going back and forth. Programmers often do this, get used to it. And the scale amount. And since we are not using percentages anymore, we don't need the starts. Programmers delete a lot of variables too. So game object dot light dot uh, intensity will now equal random dot range between zero and let's say, um, let's say we already have it scale intensity amount there we go let me extend this thing so we can actually see it a little bit sorry if that gets a little blurry uh, so now we can see it we have the light range is now equal to somewhere between zero and the scale amount and this is equal to that so let's get rid of the whole start function because we don't need it anymore and that was a long-winded version of making a flicker so this should be the code let's test it out shall we let me switch over all right, so now we're back in our view, and we have this all set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead. Um, actually, our intensity, I caught it before we executed. I'm not going to uh, switch over views, but our intensity is between 0 and 0 0.5. So let's make that 1.5. There we go. So now let's go back, and let's hit play and see what happens. Ah, there we go. We have a flickering light. Now, that range is a little bit slow. Let's find one that works. Let's do an interval of 0 point, uh, 0 0.05. 5, I say 5. There we go. Now we have this flickering light over here. It's just flickering away. You can see the range is changing and the intensity is changing. And let's inc let's increase our intensity amount. Oh, it stayed at 0 0.5 because it's a public variable. You'll get caught on that a lot too. I'm going to change it to 1.5. Let's change it to 3 and see what happens. 
That's cool. And let's change our scale amount to 20. Now it's getting real big. So there you go. There you have it, a uh, random light. So remember this was twofold. I wanted to test out my um, zoomer thing up here at the top. Um, so I hope it worked out, and I hope you liked the tutorial. Sorry about all the going back and forth and stuff. I will try to be better at uh, having things ready rather than just jumping in. So, um, yeah, have a good night, and uh, until next time, see you later.